a few weeks ago I started a series in which I'm basically trying to showcase every single build that a solo player might want to know in Albion Online. To do that, I'm taking every single weapon line and separating it in a specific playlist. Each of those playlists will contain all the builds from that weapon line that again you might want to be aware of as a solo new player. Chat, today we're starting the nature staff tree so i'm starting with an artifact chat the blight staff uh this build that i'm about to show you right now it's mainly for pve but i did have some items over there that could actually help you do some pvp as well however this build kind of falls short in terms of uh, pvping because you don't really have a lot of chase or a lot of getaway so more often than not people would just end up running away from you and you cannot really do much against that you can really do much against that not to mention that your damage is very predictable which would lead people to be able to push very easily easily knowing that you won't be able to kill them uh like just one shot them and stuff like that whereas other builds are a little bit less predictable that makes it a very good pve set but not that good for pvp i'm gonna give you some swaps in case you just want to focus on pve all right we don't have a lot of time so let's quickly move through it you want to have cold scout with the third spell first pass if you want to have face scale robe same thing and you want to have soldier boots third spell second pass if don't worry i'm going to be explaining those abilities in a second you want to have a matrot cape you could also have a tedford cape or an avalonian cape i just just Matrok as a default I, that's what i prefer at least you want to have some pork omelets you want to have some invisibility potions and you could have some gigantify if you want to focus on pvp when it comes to the weapon you want to run the second q the first w and the first passive let me quickly walk over everything the q can be cast three times whenever you finish casting them for the third time uh, it's gonna go on a cooldown now even if you cast it just once the cooldown is the same so it's much better to actually cast it for the full duration but usually want to wait a second before you cast it again uh, the reason you want to do that in pve is so you always maintain this puddle of thorns below your enemy if you spam it it's not going to be as easy to do that now this q does damage and slows the enemy then the w the w throws your enemy upward so interrupts spell casting and stuff like that and it also deals pretty nice damage it does have a delay so keep that in mind the initial hit you're gonna do a hit over there keeping the enemy in combat but the big hit the thorns raising up from the ground they have a delay so keep that in mind when it comes to fighting the enemy the enemy could potentially get um, i mean get hit by the first hit but get out of the second the e is just looking like this it increases your it increases your movement speed a little bit as far as i know and it also makes you uninterruptible you cannot get interrupted while you cast this but you can get slowed you can get rooted those slows and those roots are not going to interrupt you but they're still going to stop you into place okay uh, the r quite complex but there's two main abilities that you want to be aware of there is the middle ability which looks like this every single time an enemy hits you they're gonna get stunned and there's the third ability the frozen uh, fragment ability that's gonna help you kill bosses fast it's basically gonna enchant a bunch of frozen fragments and every single time you do damage to the enemy those fragments are gonna dash towards the enemy dealing a little bit more damage to them you heard that chat more damage more damage always good is except when it's coming towards you but let that not happen my friend for you are a healer pesky pesky mortal playing a healer build i understand albion is a competitive game you gotta get the upper hand just like i have to get souls of cats just like that just like that then you want to have uh, the cultist skull right here the cultist skull if used on a mob it deals damage if used on a player every single time the player uses an ability it doesn't matter what ability it doesn't need to be an offensive ability it can also be a defensive ability he's gonna get that damage kind of think of it as um as a curse every single time your enemy does an ability that enemy will take some damage and this damage is no joke it's honestly overpowered and most people don't actually notice it because they're used to look uh, they're used to looking for hunter hoods and buffs on yourself they're not really used to checking their debuffs so against new against newer players this is actually going to give you the upper hand easily and then there's the f which makes you move very fast but it slowly ramps up you are very vulnerable to purges in the initial stages but if you pair it with this you're gonna get a little bit more of a speed boost at the start which is when you need it the most some extra tip that i have for you before i let you go try to time your e on this passive right here this passive increases your healing cast by 20 percent if you manage to time your e on that passive you're gonna heal for like 130 something hp per second which is insane i'll try to show that if the time allows so check this out Three spells right there, fourth spell, and look at my HP right here, 163. Wow, it's even more than I thought. So that's actually insane, insane healing. But you know what's even more insane? The fact that I managed to time this right. Chad, let me show you the build in action. Check it out. 
Right, chat? Let's speed clear this camp. This is where this build shines. It's not going to be amazing for PvP because you don't really have the option of chasing people or running away from people that much. But it's going to be absolutely amazing in PvE. You're just going to melt everything and you're not even going to feel like you're trying. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, come on. It, it pulls the boss as well. Even with this, even with this. I mean, I'm not gonna... I mean, I might actually just push through. Normally, I would have reset it after I killed the mobs. But this time... Nah. Nah. Just nah. Not bad. Could have been much better, but... Not bad. Pretty really aggressive. How on earth is he? How on earth is he so aggressive? He's really fast though. How on earth is he so fast? He's really fast. I don't want to reset this. really fast over there how on earth was he so fast let's get this it's gonna be a good showcase can I stun the spider I can stun the spider that's actually great <laughs> this is so good okay I need to kill this really fast let me stay full HP so that um, I don't attract any unwanted company. Let me say it like that. Boom! Not that bad. Not that bad. Baited, you baited, my friend. Baited, you baited. Oh, I have the. Oh, that sucks. Well, that sucks. Why did I have the 12 seconds cooldown? I mean, now of course he's going for me. Why wouldn't he? He's not gonna catch me though. I need to run out of this. Come on, bleeds. Boom. I mean, invisibility pot. easy escape if you hold on to your resources you don't have a lot of escape potential but if you use them right if you use the things that you have right you should be able to escape quite often watch us play live on twitch.tv slash mockdown